Today, we become legends. We all make our fair share of mistakes in Smite. With a game as complex as this, it can be hard as a new player to find your footing and work out some bad habits to improve at the game over time. Well, hopefully this video can help you identify your mistakes and work towards fixing them. If you enjoy these kinds of guide based top 10s then be sure to subscribe to the channel as there will be more where this one came from for sure in season 9, but without further ado, let's jump in with mistake number 1. So first up we have not valuing penetration highly enough. So this is actually one that can apply to many different stats that are undervalued because they're not so simple like power or health. Stuff like anti heal, CCR and percent damage mitigation are continually undervalued, especially by new players. In regards to penetration though, the math doesn't lie. Penetration is a great way to increase your damage and a combination of power and penetration will always do better than just trying to maximise your power as fast as possible. As we can see in this table, the same amount of power can do a wide variation of damage depending on the penetration you have. Someone with 5 penetration only does 2 thirds of the damage that someone with 50 penetration would deal. Since this is a new player oriented video I won't go too deep on the numbers and math of why penetration is great but I do have a more in depth video on the topic that you can check out after this one, link will be in the description for that. Mistake number 2, not learning the very basics of each role, for conquest at least. Having a wide variety of basic knowledge is greater than the sum of its parts. Knowing a little about every role will massively improve your understanding of the broader perspective of the match rather than honing solely in on your one role that you prefer. If you're a mid laner, it helps to know how to play as a jungler so you can synergize better with your teammates and know what they're thinking to a certain extent. And it also helps to know the tricks the enemy jungler will want to pull out on you when they dive you in a teamfight. This broader game knowledge combined with specific knowledge of your main roles and gods is how you improve quickly at the game. My personal recommendation is to find two roles you like, focus more on those than the others but still learn the fundamentals of every role to a basic level, in terms of what their objectives are throughout the game, what they provide to the team, their strengths and weaknesses etc. Once again I have a whole video on what each conquest role provides to the team at various stages of the match, link below. The reason I suggest two roles is because the queuing system lets you choose a primary and secondary role for smite that you have a much higher chance of getting queued into than random roles. You can focus hard on learning those two while developing your understanding of the other roles if you get a lobby where you're denied one of your two queued roles. Mistake number 3, not respecting minions. The minions of smite may seem small but they're a huge part of the game, especially earlier on in the farming and learning phases of the game. Minions hurt a lot. If you aggro a full wave of enemy minions by attacking the enemy god before clearing them, you will feel the pain. Specifically the archer minions, the back three of the wave do around two thirds of the total damage output of the minion wave despite only making up half of the total minions. Killing archers somewhat disarms a minion wave in that way which can be really life saving in early lane fights. But this mistake actually has two meanings, so at number 4 we have not respecting minions for their bountiful golden XP, not their combat prowess. Proper farming of minions, making sure you don't miss any if possible, can make up a substantial mechanical skill gap just by providing the farmer with more items and levels. Basically if you're 3 levels and an item up, it doesn't matter if you play a bit worse than your opponent, you'll still win the fight. Proper farming is something that needs a larger spotlight than one placement in the top 10, but general rules I follow is to always prioritise my wave before going back to any other camps in the local area, only taking camps in downtime between waves. Last hitting minions is an obvious but still important tip that gives more gold over time. This is more relevant earlier in the game though since most gods can easily kill a wave with one or two abilities as the game goes on which pretty much guarantees last hits. And on the flip side of last hits we have not letting minions get hit by your tower if possible. Minions lose almost all their gold value if they take a tower hit, this is to disincentivize people from just sitting on a tower and passive farming, so if you can keep the wave out of your tower range if possible, that's a big chunk of gold you prevent losing. Mistake number 5 is always using everything as soon as you have it off cooldown. This is an exaggeration but this does happen a lot to newer players, sometimes saving abilities or relics for the right moment rather than the first moment they are useful can work out better in the long run. Using beads on Fenrir's stun for example is a great idea, he does tons of damage with his 3 and you don't want to be stunned into that after he jumps on you, but the idea is less great when you realise he'll just ult you for free straight afterwards and you have no beads to get out of that and you die for free to the enemy team. Saving things for the right moment is crucial, this also applies to abilities too, firing off a Kukulkan ultimate as soon as you can might seem great, you get the damage and can start the cooldown for the next one, but waiting for a Geb to blink in and stun your targets for a near guaranteed hit will usually work out better than firing it raw. Mistake number 6 is putting too much focus on the pro scene and the meta of the game. New players, heed my words, the SPL doesn't apply to you. The environment is completely different for lower level casual games compared to the SPL or Grandmasters ranked where following the meta or alternatively breaking the meta are more relevant. Use the tips I've mentioned earlier in this video to find roles and gods you enjoy and get good at those roles and gods. I wouldn't recommend you go looking for a tier list to decide who you want to play if you're new to the game. 
Mistake number seven is not prioritizing objectives enough. This is a huge one that I see all the time in new players that don't fully understand the flow of a conquest match. Again, I have a specific video linked down below for that that goes into detail about each phase of the match and how priorities shift over time. But this is a thing that I always come back to with new players. These objectives, they literally win you the game. Yet I see many players either not prioritizing them enough or even outright ignoring them just to push their lane. The team that groups up as five and takes regular gold furies throughout the game then takes a fire giant will beat the team that sat doing their own thing and don't know what a pyromancer even is. The rewards they provide are too great to pass up, especially as the game transitions out of the laning phase. Mistake number eight is learning what to build, not why to build. So this one might seem a little bit cryptic, but it really is as simple as understanding why you want the items you want on certain gods and in certain roles. If you ever see a build recommended by someone or using a pro match, always try to think about why those items were the best choice. Did they offer very efficient stats for the cost, meaning the player could have the numbers edge and win fights that way? Was it an item that synergized specifically with their god's playstyle? <coughs> King Arthur Gladiel. <coughs> You'll always improve faster if you try to understand the core reasoning behind why something works, rather than just knowing it does and copying it. Mistake number nine is learning only one god. This also applies to learning just a few gods as the general principle is the same. Having a wide god pool not only increases your flexibility in terms of what roles you can fill for the team, and if you plan to play ranked, what gods you might get banned, but you also get the effect I discussed earlier with roles, where knowing how a bunch of different gods and playstyles work allows you to better adapt to your teammates using that god or enemies using it against you. As a very simplified example, you might have played against a Wheelix a few times and realised she pulls gods to the ground out of jumps and knockups, but if you've never played as her or read up on her kit, you might not know that she gets a metric ass load of bonus power and attack speed, as well as root, slow and knockback immunity for 6 seconds after she uses it. So you definitely shouldn't box her after she's ulted. Again, it's a simple example and I'm sure most of you watching know that a Wheelixel is also a great steroid on top of the pull, but the general principle applies to all the knowledge you can acquire from even playing as a god once or twice and getting a feel for how they play. And finally, mistake number 10 is not checking the map enough slash not warding the map enough. Probably the most obvious yet somehow never heeded piece of advice is wards win games. Your minimap is one of the best tools you have to get information about the match, be that timers on your next jungle camp, where your minions are currently up the lane, and by extension you can know when the enemy wave is arriving, the positions of your teammates to see if engaging a fight would be good or not, timers on objectives like Gold Fury and Fire Giant, timers on enemy phoenix respawners, enemy positions, there's just so much you can gather from that little map in the top right, and wards are basically minimap level 2. They upgrade your minimap to be able to see enemy positions at all times, and they're a great tool to help improve at the game. If you know where the enemy is and they don't know where you are, that's a huge tactical advantage. But that's it from me for the top 10 biggest new player mistakes in Smite. Hopefully you learned something from this one that can help you on your Smite journey. If you did, don't forget to drop a like before you leave and I wish you luck on improving. But other than that, I'll catch you guys in another video later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.